Make Your Peace Podcast is the Winona Earp fan podcast that digs deep into every episode, not only providing comprehensive recaps, but also delving into character relationships and motivations. Hosts Catherine and Laura take their time exploring all of the nooks and crannies of each action-packed episode, puzzling over and speculating on moments you may have missed. If you enjoy a good discussion of your favorite sci-fi show, then this podcast is definitely for you. You can find Make Your Peace podcast on Twitter at 4YE underscore MYP podcast, where you will find links to their latest episodes. Make Your Peace podcast. Dig a little deeper. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Make Your Peace, a 4YE podcast about when on earth. I'm Catherine Mushaw. And I'm Laura Hayes. And today we're discussing Season 3, Episode 12, War Paint. But a few notes before we get into it, uh, as this is the season finale, so just an overall thank you to everybody who's, um, you know, been been with us this entire season and, and for new listeners and, and our old. So thanks, guys, for, for coming with us all season and everything through my many rants and all that stuff, so... <laughs> Thankfully, after this episode, we will have one more for you. So, as mentioned, we are previously we are doing a season three wrap up, and we would like to include our listeners on on that. So, let us know some of your favorite moments, some thoughts about the season, or some of your theories for season four, and we'll share them on the pod. So, just try to get them to us by like October twelfth because we are going to take like a break like a week or two in between, just to kind of give us some breathing room in between, you know, the regular podcasting. So enjoy this one while you can. No, <laughs> enjoy, stretch this one out, guys, because it'll be a couple weeks. Um, and then we'll be firmly in hiatus mode. I don't even feel like we're on hiatus yet. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah. And also, as per usual, thanks to the folks at our Fiction Addiction podcast for our commercials. So we appreciate it. And with that, Laura, do you do you have a recap? Catherine, this finale had everything. <laughs> Rallying death speeches, barn confessions, Scorpio tendencies, drag race fanboys, pureed appendages, snake dudes, dirt lungs, and oh my god, Waverly, no! <laughs> Thank you so much. I have really appreciated the Stefan recaps this season. And I, I look forward to many more in season four. <laughs> Once again, just you're just looping me in on the recording. All right, I'll give them to you. I'm sorry. I can't help it. <laughs> it's okay. That's all right. I, I, I see your game here, Catherine. <laughs> That's the trade-off. I warned you about letting us know, like, me, hey, I'm gonna, like, have our listeners like tell us things i warned you pre-record but then i hit you with bring us more stuff on yeah i'm yeah, so sorry yeah. anyway thank you so much Alrighty, so how about that title bit of a curveball this episode as kelly clarkson madeline merlot and devin dawson all have a song called war paint so let's give it to kelly clarkson everyone likes kelly mm-hmm also, I didn't get very far on first impressions here. I I mean, this I think this is a perfect title for a finale. You know, you, you know there's going to be like a big fight yeah. and and all that stuff, but I was mostly just singing the lyrics to Billie Holiday by the band War Paint. So <laughs> it just kind of got lost in the Didn't go very far. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I think you're right. I think it's pretty self-explanatory as some of them have been. So I think I think it's all right. And there is a lot to discuss in this episode. As I mentioned pre-recording, I have a lot of notes, which should shock nobody. But I have, like, a lot of notes. So. Kick us off, then. I don't want to kick us off, no. I was just going to, I was just going to, no, no, no. I still want to ask all you right. where you want to okay, start. Okay, 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 all right. <laughs> I was like, take it away. No, okay. no, no. <laughs> All right, so, uh, okay, I'll, I'll start us off. So, right off the bat, um, Winona's rallying truce speech, the revenants, 
was everything I wanted and more. She started at an 11, yeah. like with that F bomb. And she just, and just kept rolling, you know, like with the honesty vomit and like somewhere, somewhere the honesty gets personal and we see mm -hmm. a side of her that we haven't really seen before. Certainly not so clearly, I think, yeah. you know, like we see a Winona who's facing up to what she was before. Mm -hmm. uh, and who she might be if she's not the heir. Yeah. Not much of anything. That's what she, like, says about the Winona that she was. Uh, awesome hair, tired liver, and a loaded last name. Like, that's what she believes she is yeah. without this curse. So it went from epic to heartbreaking to bourbon pretty damn quick. I mean, we get, like I said, I mean, last episode, we, we had a Buffy Summers-esque speech, or a Buffy Summers-worthy speech, and I think this was another one. It was, it was so good. That was first on my list of favorite moments, obviously, because at the beginning, <laughs> and my notes go chronological. But I guess since, since this is where we're starting, I guess we should probably, I want to talk a little bit about the curse breaking, too, um, because it is, uh, this, like, wraps up where... We kind of knew that a lot of Winona's identity was in this curse. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's how we start off. And her even, you know, the only thing that she's good at is killing. We know that's not true. But right. she firmly believes that. So I I like this scene. I have more thoughts on that. I also, but I just want to stick on this scene for a minute. I also, I loved watching her bury that talisman and pulling the, the Revenant, over, like pulling Jarvis over. And we talked about parallels with Ward last episode. And this was another one. I mean, mm -hmm. granted, it was Waverly who buried the last talisman, like because of Bobo's urging. But still, you see this Revenant's coming on to the land because of an alliance with an Earp. And this time it's just got a totally different vibe. It's got a totally different feeling. And she was successful where her father failed. Yeah. But I, I did want to touch a little bit more about the identity thing, especially because we are told that the curse was ended, that the curse was broken. And part of me, like, is still having, like, a that can't be it reaction to it, you know? Like, that, that can't be it. But, I mean, we get the parallel to the pilot, where she, you know, in the pilot, when she turns 27, you know, she's on the ground, and we see her pupils dilate. Right. And um, in, in this, we we see her on the ground still after she tries to tackle Bolshar, and we see her pupils constrict. So it's, you know, something pulling away from her. And then she mm -hmm. she has that conversation with Waverly just say, you know, I'm just, you know, it's it's gone. So I am really interested to see where this goes next season. Because she also talks about Bolshar being vulnerable like her. So there's a lot to unpack here with a little bit of... of with Winona's identity, and I think we're going to be looking at a major identity crisis next season. Oh, so. oh, I yeah, I yeah. wholeheartedly agree. I think she's going to be okay for a bit. Yeah, she's got a mission. Yeah, right now, right? She's got to get her baby girl back. Uh, but I, I'm with you. That scene really stood out to me when Waverly finds her, and mm -hmm. the revenants are gone. Winona looks positively panicked mm -hmm. while delivering what should be good news yeah you know like we're free yay but there's just there's none of that you know so yeah i i agree with you i think it will i think when it hits her it will hit her hard yeah. but i don't think that we will start on that no. because there is still so much that she needs to accomplish yeah i mean she like you said she's got a mission for for next season and she's a, I mean it's her she's not alone she's got Nedley but you know she's got to find she's got to get Waverly and Doc back she's got to find out what happened to Nicole and Jeremy and Robin she's got to find out who Valdez is and I'm just now realizing I meant to look her up because she's in the comic books and I forgot <laughs> 
<laughs> It'll be a season four surprise. Maybe something we talk about in the wrap up. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's just it's we're we're gonna be hitting the ground running, but it's just like my first reaction was like that it can't be that easy. The like it cannot be over, especially. We know Rosita's coming back next season. So now, like, the Revenants can't be gone. Like, so it, it's it's a lot of questions as to, like, what really did happen and stuff like that. And You know, yeah. I'm just spitballing here, but I think it would be kind of cool if, like, the Revs who deserve to be Revs are gone, you know? And then, like, the people who kind of got roped in... Yeah. Like Fish or Levi, if they weren't already dead, yeah. or um, or Rosita, you know, yeah. like bystanders who who got who got caught up in this. I think it'd be really cool if they got their lives back. But yeah, it, also I, I think you're you're right. I'm just I'm saying, wouldn't it be nice, you know? Yeah, I that would be awesome. Kind of like a a rejudgment kind of deal. Um, yeah. Also, I mean, why well, not owes Rosita one? big effing apology so i'm waiting for that to happen but yeah i think that would be really cool if we saw something like that where where they almost got a second chance especially since what was against the law back when wyatt was shooting people might not have been like might not be the same so it's these people were punished to an eternity of torment for maybe something that they shouldn't have been Right. So. I think that'd be nice, but we'll see. Yeah. I, there's a lot of uh, big questions, I think. But, yeah, it's just my first thought was, like, well, it couldn't have been that easy, you know? Like, just like that, it yeah. seemed. But, I mean, I guess it wasn't necessarily easy either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I guess that's, that's the other side. She got her hand cut, you know? With that dirty, she bled. She bled for it. That dirty axe. I knew axe. you were gonna have a problem. <laughs> dirty axe. I feel you. I take wound care very seriously. Right? You have to. And yeah. I mean, you take hands very seriously. Any good lesbian would, right? <laughs> it's true. Um, it was just such a dramatic thing with Bolshar picking up that axe too. It's like, really, you didn't have a knife. You had to pick up this big, like. It was, it's so theatrical it though, is. and he was doing it on purpose, like yeah. that cracked me up. I like Ugh. that. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did also kind of, well, I'm kind of still on this train of thought, kind of talking about the end of the episode a little bit, just that last scene with Nedley, because I know I mentioned that she has Nedley. That whole sequence after the staircase where when Winona goes back to the homestead and then ends up back in Shorty's felt like something wasn't quite right. So I'm kind of wondering what the case is there because like the homestead was not shot up when she went back. We just saw Valdez's name on it, on the staircase, but I don't know. I feel like maybe we're looking at something different. Like we're, we're looking at maybe something else here. I don't know. It may be an odd thing. Like, I don't like know. Dimensional like dimensional or? Yeah, uh, like a, yeah, like a plane situation. Like a plane shift? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Something yeah. like I that. I see your point. Yeah. Yeah. So I had that thought and I didn't want to lose it because you know how organized my notes are. You know, like, also, I have nothing but faith that the fate of our loves and the whole town of Purgatory couldn't be safer than in Team Nedley and Winona's hands. I love this team. Mm -hmm. I am so beyond delighted that we did not lose Randy Nedley this season. Yes. I, it was so possible with his retirement. I know. So when he, yeah, man, when he picked up that shotgun at the end, I was just like, oh, he survived. I know. I, we have talked about it. We've been talking about it. And it was like, oh my God, we're going to lose Nedley this season. Yeah. And I am. So glad to be wrong. Yeah, me too. And. You're right. There's uh, there's really few people I would rather see her with because Nedley has become such a great character, and I think he's he he's 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 such a nice addition in the group and stuff like that. And I think he's 
probably what she needs right now. Yeah. They also, they, they just sort of, their energies are on two different levels. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Wynon, Wynon is always, like, you know, like, up, you know, like, mm -hmm. she's always, like, keyed up, she's always doing something, you know, like, she's a little, especially where Waverly is concerned, it can make her a bit frantic, you know, yeah. and, and Nedley's kind of always, you know, he's so even keeled, you know, he's always, like, he's down here, you know, and he's just, Mm -hmm. He's so much more chill because he's just seen everything, you yeah. know, and been able to do nothing about most of it. So yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good duo. He offered up a lot in this episode too, because it's like, you know, he say he, he killed those beekeepers that were not threatening the boys, but I mean, he showed up in his Hawaiian shirt. So bonus is there. <laughs> Oh, I got very excited. I think I yelled Vacation Nedley. Yeah. I, I, if I remember correctly. There you go. I think I, I yelled Vacation Nedley. I vaguely remember doing that. Um, but no, I mean, he's he was such a nice thing, like, you know, kind of getting Jeremy back on track and kind of giving that push to not give up and stuff like that. So I am looking forward to that team. Me too. So it'll it'll be good. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we got some good team-ups, as per usual. Gotta love Waverly and Winona teaming up at the end, you know? Kind yeah. of how it should be. Mm -hmm. So, enjoyed that a lot. I thought it was really beautiful that Winona has been, like, a slave to this curse, mm -hmm. like, her entire life. Because of some squabble that happened between some dudes a long time ago. Yeah. Insert Buffy chosen speech <laughs> here. This time, though, it was Waverly giving power to Winona. Yeah. Like, giving her the power to defeat her enemy and choosing her, not cursing her. Yeah. So I thought that was a really wonderful way to go out, you know? And, I mean, just... We saw a lot in Winona in this episode, you know, from her, from stuff like that. And I really like how Waverly kind of went after Winona after she drugged them, after she drugged everybody. And Waverly's like coming at her and Winona's like, I didn't drug yours. I need you. Yeah. And Waverly, of course, assumes, oh, you need backup. You need me as your backup. And Winona's like, no, dude, like I'm yours. Like, this is your mm -hmm. thing. But, yeah, I loved Waverly naming Winona, you know, a hero, yeah. a champion. It was so great. And just even seeing Winona reunited with Peacemaker in a different way. Because, you know, Peacemaker is now a sword. And, of course, it's like she gets it and it, you know, she recognizes it. The second she grabs it, it's like, Peacemaker. And, you know, we get that blue flame and it's you know <laughs> it's really cool so yeah, it was. i love that moment it was um we got some got some really good herb sisters moments mm -hmm. i mean ugh, that the end man <laughs> yeah also i don't know if like the flaming sword is just blue flame but i, I thought it was weird that it was blue you know, not orange, or I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. But I, I don't know anything about this sword, you know what I mean? So I, I don't know that it, it has color codes, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's Peacemaker, though. Yeah, so I would think... Like, and but, when it was turned into a sword, it there was orange smoke that did it. Yeah. So, I don't know. Then again, when Peacemaker, when she aimed Peacemaker at Bolshar... It went, like, that whitish color, so... That's true. It was never... Yeah. Yeah. That just stood out to me. I, I, I don't have an answer for why the flame was blue when, typically, when we've seen blue with Peacemaker, it's been mercy killings. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, I don't... I don't... But, again, this is a new format. This yep. is a new yeah, yeah, weapon. We're, we're kind of looking at a new animal here with, with Peacemaker yeah. the sword. That I'm still, like, a little confused about, timeline-wise. I'm having a lot of trouble with Peacemaker the gun and being told, like, you know, Peacemaker the sword was given to a champion and stuff like that. And it's like, 
but but we know that Doc gave Wyatt Peacemaker and stuff like that, so I'm having some issues. I'm, I'm having some confusion <laughs> with, like, a lot of this. So, yeah, it's just, it's a lot of weird conflicting things for me for Peacemaker. I don't know. I'm sure it'll be just as cool as a sword as it is a gun. I'm just having some timeline problems right now. <laughs> so I keep focusing on that. <laughs> but that's that's pretty on par for me. I, I also did like when Waverly runs up on the stairs at the end there to, to grab Peacemaker. Um, and Winona's like, are you levitating? Because <laughs> she still can't see the stairs. I did like that yeah. moment. Yeah, the, the whole Peacemaker to Sword thing is still tripping me out a bit, too. But the sword in the steps was all very King Arthur to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. You are not the first person to say that to me. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Dev, who I got a message that was, Waverly is King Arthur! Yeah. The other thing that sort of hung me up, and I, I talked to you about this, mm -hmm. was I was watching it and I was like, how many swords are in play here? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I was like, what? Like, um, and I was like, two? Are there two? You know, like, uh, so th I guess the only way that it, that makes sense to me is if both angels, uh, Julian and Juan Carlo, um, were both given or both had access to flaming swords that were protecting the garden. Uh, Juan Carlo gave that one to Wyatt Earp, disguised it as a gun. And that's the peacemaker that we know and love. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it looks like Julian hid his in the greenhouse. Yeah. Um, and they're, you know, Julian's station. That's another thing I want to get into more later. But Julian's station seemed to be outside of the garden. Bolshar yeah. makes a comment that's like, "You were never even in it." Like mm -hmm. to Julian, so he must have been like, you know, like the sentinel, like standing at yeah. the steps to keep somebody from going in. So if he had a sword, what we talked about also in our Bible section some mm -hmm. other week is that there was a sword placed in the garden to guard the tree of life. Right. So it would still kind of follow that whole, you know, and somehow I guess maybe Juan Carlo got his hands on it. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's all very confusing. So it might have to be something I let go for now, which is really hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, it's hard to, to really wrap around that. So it might have to be just something we accept and move on. I don't know. I don't say that often. I like never admit defeat with stuff like this, but there's just a lot of pieces here to work with. Yeah. So. Well, I mean... So, Ju I mean, Julian did give us quite the information dump, right? Yeah. Like, when he was talking to Winona. Like, we hear that word again from him, tasks. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, tasked. He was tasked with protecting the garden. Um, him and Juan Carlo, sorry. Yeah. And Julian tells us that Juan Carlo left the garden first mm -hmm. and took the flaming sword, which was the guard's, the garden's security system, as, as he called it. So, uh, yeah, so that that's why I think what I think. Um, I don't, but I don't know. And yeah, I, I think that that could have been addressed a little earlier. And I, and yeah, um, maybe if, if, maybe if it had just been, you know, said in some way, like there are two, you know, I don't yeah. know, like, you know, you like, you don't have to like come right out and say it like then, but then, you know, I wouldn't have been watching and going, okay, wait, wait, what sword is it? Had the, you know, because I saw the sword, you know, shoved into the steps, and then later I see a sword retrie retrieved from mm -hmm. the greenhouse, and I was like, what, how did it get there? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And that was actually, that was actually the moment that it clicked for me. So right there at the end, I was like, oh, there are two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that yeah. was, but I, I think that was probably my biggest thing, was the, was Peacemaker. That was, that was my biggest thing. Yeah, I don't know, and I mean, like, I'd like to be able to say maybe we'll get more information, but I'm not sure that we will. I 
I don't know how much they're going to focus on this. I mean, yeah, we're not done with the garden by any means, but I don't know how much about this particular thing we're going to have information on. Yeah, I don't know. And I've kind of got this answer, so I'm not really looking for anything <laughs> else. You know, I'm kind of fine yeah. with it. I'm like, well, this is how it makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, so so that, that works for me. But um Oh, and, and yeah, you know, we've still got to, supposedly we've still got to get in the garden, right? Yeah. So, so it, it could, it could come up, you know, she could walk in there with the flaming sword and the garden could be like, we want our security system back or something. Maybe, you know, maybe it gets mentioned a little bit more. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't either. I think it's a pretty valid point and making sense of it is I think anything all we can do <laughs> I guess I mean might as well keep talking about that end there I mean we kind of have now like we're we're talking about the beginning of the end of the episode but that's just kind of how it flowed into what we needed to especially I kind of want to stick on that that we got some really nice things in, in the end of the episode mm -hmm. we like I said we got some weird confusing things but Man, watching Waverly on those steps was hard. Yeah, it was. Because there's a moment where she just kind of admits defeat. Yeah. And that's just, oh, so rough. Mm -hmm. um, it's really rough to see. To, it was really rough to see that. And just why known as utter helplessness. You know, she'd do anything that she can to try to save Waverly. And she couldn't get through those stairs. Mm-hmm. So that was nice. Uh, I felt the snake, the, or sorry, the snake thing was like really, really weird and off putting. <laughs> like when Bolshar went all snaky and bit Winona. <laughs> it yeah. was like to borrow much. willows if I wasn't gay before. Yeah. Yeah, I totally, I totally like it's not as bad. No, it's not. As wig lady in As Buffy. wig lady. Not few things are as bad as wig lady. Yeah. But it was still like one of those things where it's like, this is not okay. And then like, of course, Doc with the excellent timing to like run up and suck the poison out, which PSA, you are not supposed to do that when you get bitten by something venomous. Don't suck the poison out. It's a bad thing to do. Because <laughs> it's just there's more that can go wrong and it's not really helpful because stuff moves quickly. I'm not going to lie because I think I had the same line of thinking that way related though because she starts screaming no and like banging harder on the wall. And like there was a second where I thought Doc was going to turn my no no. <laughs> my first, my first um, place was just like, oh, is he still like vampire he's gonna turn winona and like not gonna lie i was kind of into it <laughs> thank you i would have been so excited oh my god i would have loved it yeah missed opportunity well we also don't know where he stands with his vampire Bit yeah vampirism. that's the word i was like there's a word here that i was missing we don't know where yeah. he stands because you know, Julian tells him he wouldn't have been able to hold the sword if his soul was truly corrupted or uh -huh. compromised. That's the word he used. Which I mean, seems which legit, I but... forgot to I forgot to mention. Thank you. Um, which is another reason that I think that there are two or there were two flaming swords in play. I mean, we know that Winona had one in her hand that got knocked out of her hand, and then Waverly gave her the other one. But I do think that if Waverly had chosen her with Julian's sword, it would have had the same effect. I think they were both holy blades, uh, based on what Julian yeah. said to Doc. Go, yeah. No, that's fair. Um, no, I mean, like, he says that. And I was just like, seems legit. But I mean, also, it was wrapped up. So, um, either way, yeah. So, he is told that. We know he got past the circle of holy, uh, the, the rope holy wall, uh, the... The circle of holy water soaked rope. That's mm -hmm. the words. We know he got past that to go running to Winona at the staircase and was also able to walk up the stairs. And we are told that only the mortal and only the righteous can go up those stairs. Mm -hmm. um, 
So it kind of begs the question, what happened to Doc when Waverly spoke to him at the at the end? Um, or sorry, not yeah, and near the end of the last episode. Yeah, that was a big section of what I had, so I'm just going to cross that out. Uh, we are on the exact same page. <laughs> I figured. I have nothing to add to that. That's not good. Don't want me to. I'm, I'm, I don't want to plow over you. With No, your... you're good, man. Uh, I No, I mean, hard same. I don't, <laughs> and that, that's like, yeah, that's. Well, cause so I, yeah, and I got the feeling also that it had something to do with Waverly. Um, yeah. I don't know if it was her kissing him on his cheek yeah. or her crying over him or what she said to him about loving the man he was yeah. and whether or not that had, you know, some, some sort of power over him. I also, you know, uh, this is, this is random and I meant to write it down and I didn't. But I also really like, you know, we've sort of, we've talked before about how Waverly is kind of judgmental. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I like that. Uh, I like it so much uh, now that we know that she's like part angel. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it, she's almost this like deciding figure. Mm -hmm. it, it's all, it, it is like she's judging people, yeah. you know? Like, the man you were, like, was that some sort yeah. of judgment that, that freed Doc? You know, we see her put Bo Bobo down. Yeah. You know, like, we, uh, yeah, it's just, we see her choose Winona, you know, like, you are worthy. Bobo, you are not, you are dead. Doc, you are human now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so, and, and again, I don't know that it was Waverly who, that cured Doc for sure. We're not going to know that until uh, next season. But I don't think, I think there's little doubt that he is cured. Yeah. Um, and I also just like, uh, I like that for Waverly. I think it's funny that, you know, mm -hmm. you and I have commented on it so many times. Yeah. And now it, it's almost her role in the show. Yeah. You know, like she's this, or it, it, almost like a, a way to showcase her ability is like passing this judgment that just got a whole lot more righteous. Yeah. Real yeah. fast. And now that you mentioned that, um, cause I hung around in whiskey and donuts after the episode for a bit. Um, and, uh, Bonnie, Bonnie Farrar of, you know, she's at Winona fans. She theorized that, yeah, that the tear returned doc to the man he once was because of what Waverly said. Um, so, like, it's w definitely Waverly's power isn't, like, her ring it isn't in the ring. It's it's tied to who she is. So it's almost like, and to, to, to follow on that, it's like, it's almost like the ring unlocked that in her and everything like that. Um, yes. And you and I spoke several times about how yeah. we wondered whether or not the ring had a vocal component. Yeah. And uh, I yeah, think... Yeah, but maybe... Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So maybe the ring was a catalyst to mm -hmm. a vocal, a, like power or a power based in speech that Waverly's had all along. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Or that's like what that. Bonnie was saying. Well, yeah. I mean, I kind of added on to what Bonnie was saying yeah. a little bit too. But yeah, yeah. That's she interesting. Just, yeah, because she, she like she pointed out that she thought it was tied to Waverly and not the ring, and I agree. Like I think it's definitely more Waverly than the ring, and that. Mm -hmm. That maybe the ring just unlocked this because yeah, I mean she even with with Bobo was, I mean that was kind of rough watching her do that with Bobo, watching her kill Bobo. He did he did go after her dad. Well, I, he did. I don't know. Like, are we to believe that Bobo was no longer completely in control of his actions? Because Char, sorry, because Julian says that he can't save him now. Bobo gave up his free will. And yeah. later, when Bobo attacks Julian, it almost looks like Bolshar is, like, playing the part of puppet mm -hmm. master. Like, yeah. the way he raises his arm up and then, mm -hmm. you know, brings it down and then Bobo stabs him. So, I I don't know. I don't know that that was... But I think Bobo knew some shit was going to go down. And that's yeah. why that's why he went to talk to Waverly first. Uh, yeah, I think he knew that no good was going to come from that. And I um, I, I mentioned um, in our last episode that it's going to look really bad with how hard I came on the angel, considering my stance on some of the Bobo stuff. You know, it's 
it's a little unfortunate with how this went for Bobo because, you know, if Robin had let Bobo out when he asked, if they had just kind of, like, let him out, maybe let him be part of the gang for a little bit, it probably, I mean, he, he wouldn't have gone to Bolshar, you know? And I, I saw some people expressing, like, disappointment in Bobo for choosing to go with Bolshar. But it's like, why wouldn't he have made that deal? He was, Bolshar's literally the only person who offered him out of the terrarium. Yeah. He's, he's literally the only person who said, okay, fine, come on. So it's a little, like... <laughs> It, it's hard because I think you're I think you're onto something with Bolshar playing puppet master because and, and Bobo does he goes to Waverly to free him that's what he says so I think it's it's hard not to have a lot of sympathy for Bobo and we've had this problem mm -hmm. since we we found out how we ended up cursed in the beginning like in the first part he was a really easy villain. <laughs> Yeah. In season one, and then we find out like how he came to be cursed, and then you're like, oh well, crap. Yeah. Um, also, something that I think people should keep in mind if they're upset that Bobo made that deal, nobody gets on Doc for not liking tight spaces, and I think we need to remember that Bobo has spent a good chunk of yeah. time at the bottom of a well alone. He didn't just freak out about them leaving him locked up. He was yeah. okay when there were people there. Yeah. It was when he was alone and locked up that mm -hmm. he started to lose it. And that's when he made that deal. Yeah. He made that deal when he begged everybody to let him out and let him go with them. And they didn't. And then they left him alone. And then Bolshar walked in. It was almost like anybody on the other side of that yeah. glass that was keeping him company whether it was Winona or Robin or anybody else, that was his friend in that moment. Yeah. And I mean, like, Bo uh, Bobo had a lot going on. So, I mean, did he deserve another chance from Winona and the gang? Like, did he deserve their trust? I don't know. I don't know. But I think, I he, I think he deserved the level of... I think he deserved more than he was given by the group. So, yeah, and it was just, it was interesting because, you know, you talk about, like, he was just having trouble with with being alone. He and Robin spent a significant amount of time together, and it looks like that really, really kind of hit with Robin because we see him when he sees Bobo's clothes and is like, Bobo, like, there's a look there. And it's like, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by that, too, because Robin is an interesting character. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't, Robin, I mean, we talked about his optimism last episode, but he just, he doesn't bring that level of harshness, like, that the rest of the group does. So he brings, like, an extra level of humanity and a reminder that, you know, you're the good guys, you can still be maybe treating people a certain way. Yeah. The cynical part of me says he just hasn't been at it as long. But, oh, certainly not. But <laughs> I, I do, I do agree. I, but it, regardless of that, I think that mm -hmm. you touch on something important. I think it's very easy when the stakes are this high mm -hmm. to lose yourself in the game. Yeah. You know, and I and I'll lose a little bit of that humanity, and and that is what he brings. Yeah, and I, I think there's, I mean, once again, a level of kindness towards a revenant could have turned the tables in this episode and or in this season and we saw that last season with Rosita. I will keep coming down on how they treated yeah. Rosita. <laughs> but I mean to to an extent she knows that, right? Yeah. She made a deal with a truckload of revenants this episode. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. She deserves Winona owes her one hell of a damn apology. Yeah. I will keep saying that. I am yeah. not gonna stop. <laughs> also, I just, I'm just sad to lose Bobo. I just don't want him gone. I don't want it. You can yeah. take 12 more of those angel dads. I don't care. Yeah. Just give me Bobo. Because he is, he's such an intriguing character. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I kind of want to see what Waverly does from now on. Because that was a cold moment we saw from Waverly. 
in a very like a very hard moment, however you want to refer to it, that we saw some from Waverly that when she killed him, and you know, going back to what you say about, you know, finding her purpose maybe in judgment or something like that, and that could be very, very interesting moving forward. Yeah, I was going to circle back around to that, but you just did. Um, so, uh, no, but that that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, like that, yeah. yeah. So um, when you started talking about, oh, I don't know, it's so cold. Are we going to see more of that? that I, that's what I went to yeah, in yeah. my mind. I was like, ah, like they're really playing up this yeah. judgment side of her. And I, I, I think it's possible that the Waverly that we get back is is still Waverly, don't get me mm-hmm. wrong, you know, but um, knowing what she knows about herself and being alone yeah, with whatever that root system was, you know, and like uh, all that stuff, I, I think the Waverly we, we get back could be a little harder. Yeah, I mean, you certainly don't get sucked into any sort of plane or whatever you want to call it, because arguably the garden is in a different plane or dimension. You certainly don't get sucked into anything like that, even if it's paradise without changing. Yeah, and I don't think it's paradise. No. That was not pleasant. No. (laughs) What happened to Waverly. Um, no. so I don't know what that's all about. Um, yeah. you know, we, we laughed about the Garden of Eden being in, uh, North America yeah. anyway. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know what this is, but that did not look heavenly. No. That, no, lo- that looked, that looked messed up. Yeah. So, we'll see. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It could be a hellmouth type thing. And again, that's... Full of, full of plants. Cause you could walk through that door and be on a world uh, where there's nothing but shrimp. <laughs> or one completely devoid of shrimp. Or one completely devoid of shrimp. I'd be okay with that one. I, I wouldn't. Look, it's got a weird texture. I can't eat it. I can be okay without it. Sorry. But there's a Buffy reference. <laughs> Shrimp. Just for our count. Um, we also kind of don't know how time passes in the garden. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I don't know. Yeah, that's so, the messed up thing about traveling between planes. Yeah, we could be looking at something where Waverly feels like she's there a day and she's gone months or we could be Mm -hmm. looking at something where Waverly has been there for years. Yeah. And if it's indeed not a paradise, that is a terrifying, terrifying thought to have. Oh, I know. No, I'm okay. (laughs) All right. So I know that it's bad, but I really, really want it. I want it so much. I'm the wrong person. I, I always want the angst. I, I know. I always want it. I oh. Do you think we won't get enough? I would be so happy if she came back. Uh, this I can't say it nicely. If she came back tortured for like decades, but she wasn't any older because time wasn't really moving. She was just like all in her head and then she gets back and she's just got to like Learn to live with people who love her again. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so... I'm here for it. So... Oh, I love it. You, you wanna... It would hurt so much. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, anybody oh. who comes across a fic like that, please make sure you send it to Lara via oh our, my God. For, our Make Your Peace Twitter that I will give you at the end of the episode, but yes. please make sure you do that. I um, want that one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're looking Nicole's at... Nicole's you know, gotta, like, win her over all over again. We're all gonna be so mad. I'm gonna be so mad, and I wanted this. I'm still gonna be angry about it. Have I read that fic? I think fics exist where Waverly is pulled into a hell dimension. I feel like I have read that fic. I have read that fic. Yeah, there, there is it. one. Somebody please help me out. Because I won't have time to find it, really. I won't have time to look for it, I don't think. Somebody help me out. One of you knows what this is. Somebody knows. 
Yeah, I mean, no, I from a... But I want to see it with my eyeballs. I know you do. I really wish you all could have seen Laura just now. Like, it was really <laughs> ridiculous. I agree with you. It could be a really interesting, like, just, you know, I get a little psychology nerd, too. I mean, psychologically, that would be really interesting to watch. Because mm-hmm. also, I mean, like, I feel like, once again, we need to remember how young Waverly and Winona are. Yeah. Waverly's 22. Yep. Why known as like 28, you know, they're 22, 23, and we're looking at 28, 29, something like that. It's really young to be dealing with this shit. Yeah. And that can really mess you up. Yeah. I could not have saved the world at 23, or 29, or yesterday. Yeah. No, I can't save the world. I could, nope, 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 saving the world for me, ever. Mm-mm. Nope. Nah, no, no, no. Unless I can save the world with, like, my random TV knowledge, in which case... I'm good okay, to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I can save the world that way. So, yeah, I just, I feel like that's also worth remembering. Like, been some shit, man. I'm, I wish that they hadn't poofed Nicole and Jeremy and Robin just because I want to see, I kind of, I wish Nicole had been there at the end. Like, I wish Nicole had been at the steps. Because I think it would have just added a fun layer. And honestly, I am tired of Nicole getting sidelined. Yeah, she... Well, I mean, this was pretty hardcore sidelining, right? This was... Yeah. This was drugged out and, of the game. Yeah. Like, that... Yeah. Like, And, you know, it kind of... Um, it's not awesome that no. that happened right after a proposal... No, you know, like we get this moment. Are you gonna? Uh, are we gonna go there now? Okay. Yeah, let's just get it over with. So we get this moment, right? Like uh, with the baby carrots, which is my favorite <laughs> line. But you know, like and, and yeah, and this, you know, like big I love you, and and waves is obviously all in, right? And she's putting a horrible ring on it, and I'll talk more about that later. But uh. Yeah, like, uh, just to focus on, on that for one second and, and yeah. leave everything else out, you know, like, there was this proposal, it, it certainly, well, I mean, it, it seemed, from what I've read, like, Emily's going with it, you know, like, she's saying it was a proposal, so I guess they're sort of engaged now, except there was no actual answer given. There was um, no question <laughs> asked! There was no question asked, there was no answer given. But we're operating under the assumption that they are now engaged. Um, and Some of yeah, are. and and then immediately, yeah, and then immediately in a conversation about how none of them um, are gonna let her fight this alone, she drugs all of them. Uh, yeah. And to be fair, you know, she drugged all of them, but Waverly, you know, like yeah. it, Nicole was not singled out here. Yeah, so let let's be fair about that. Yeah. But also, like, it's a, I, I thought it was a little messed up that, like, the fiancé was not there to watch yeah. her girlfriend get tackled by these vines. Once Gosh, again, fiance. I, I don't know. I, I wish you all could see the number of times I just did air quotes. I'm going to address the quote proposal in a minute, and I'm going to focus on the sidelining Nicole. Because we did have somebody, we had a listener. Once again, this is the uh, another tweet from at P-P-P-S-O-B-E, um, and mentions about uh, what one, it was interested in what we thought about the missed opportunity of having a lesbian heroine and getting a straight man instead. And they felt that Nicole had no impact on the story. And I am inclined to agree with this person. And like I said, I'm really tired of the sidelining of Nicole because we have seen it in, it happened in the season one finale. She didn't have much of a role in the season two finale. I mean, granted, she was the one to help Waverly over the, the the boundary, which, okay, fair. She did have a role. I don't know. It's just, and we routinely see her literally, like, get knocked out of fights and stuff like that. We don't, like, she is often removed. And it's very frustrating. Because I, like, I, I mentioned this, I think, two episodes ago, where the one thing the show does do right is giving Nicole a personality and a role outside of just being a love interest. On the flip side of that, it's like, she's still very often sidelined. And, um, rant incoming for a lot of this stuff. 
See, you've started the snowball effect on that. I know, you're not that sorry. Um, so now that I've, I've mentioned the sidelining part, I will. I have a lot of other way hot thoughts. Unless, do you have thoughts about the sidelining? Yeah, just one. Um, I just, you know, I get, okay. So again, <laughs> let me, again, let me devil's advocate here, right? So I get no. that, no, I get that, the reason the doc was there, right? Yeah. Like, they sucked the poison out, and then the reason that he was the one to go uh, up the steps after Waverly, and I will talk later about why I believe Winona couldn't do it. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, so he, you know, like, the reason that we have him doing that is because it shows us, the audience, we're like, oh my god, he must be mortal and yeah. righteous, right? Like, righteous mm -hmm. by somebody's definition. Not mine. Still mad about Kate. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, like, there was supposed to be this, oh, he, moment, you know, like, where we get, like, this big hint about him. But I don't, I, I just, I think that we could have dealt with that. Mm-hmm. In another way, you know, I think he could have been the hero, or he could have been heroic, just sucking the venom out of Winona's neck, right? And, mm -hmm. like, saving her life, and her being like, oh my god, thank you so much, you saved my life. Yeah. And then Nicole being there to run up the steps yeah. and go get her future wife. You know what I mean? Like, oh, and yeah. I kind of, I kind of resent a little bit that Doc was the one who ran up there after her, uh, yeah. when she's, she's... She's got this amazing, yeah. you know, partner, or girlfriend, or fiance, or whatever we want to call her now. Like, and and so I, I did. I thought that yeah. that that was really what kind of bummed me up was if somebody was gonna run run up there after Winona, and it, it wasn't, uh, or after Waverly, and it wasn't gonna be Winona, then I think it should have been Nicole. It most certainly should have been. That's all I have to say about that. No, I mean I agree, and I think it would have been a. <sighs> It would have been nice to see. And like I said, there's, I get why Winona drugged her friends. She made it very clear. And it was nice to see her admit that she was scared of losing people that she cared about. Yeah, that's, I totally understand um, why she drugged them. Yeah. On the flip I'm side not of saying it, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, no, no. But also, Nicole is arguably more capable of handling herself than Jeremy and Robin would have been. I understand 100% sidelining Jeremy and Robin because they would have gotten killed. Period. They would have gotten killed. That's fair. But Nicole is capable. We know she's capable. We're just, she's never allowed to show it. And I think that's, that's a lot of my frustration. And it's like, she's a great character. I love Nicole. I talk about it all the time. I love Nicole and I love what she brings, but you know, she should have been there. And yeah. it would have been a good story. I just, I feel like, uh, I, you know, she got wounded. Yeah. Protecting Kate. Yeah. And arguably, arguably, for the sake of the story, right? She got wounded so that Doc could drag her back to the homestead, a hero, and show his loyalty to the team and his place on the team. Mm hmm And then she got drugged, and she's not the one running up those steps right. after her lover, because we needed Doc. Yeah. Who I don't even like right now, because he's treated women so bad. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, so it was just all, yeah. Anyway, that's for real all I have to say about this, because I'm just uh -huh. going to make myself mad. No, it's fine. Make yourself mad because I, I have want a whole to. I have a whole string of things. Because I have this note here that I was debating on whether or not I wanted to mention, but sure, I'll go ahead. I don't love how the women on the show frequently don't have a choice. And again, you look at a lot of stuff happened to put Doc in this heroic position. Which, by the way, also... Can we just talk about the fact that I still have way hot thoughts, but I'm going to stick on Doc for a second, that Winona yells at him to go get Waverly because Nicole is dying. He puts, I can't get in. You don't have permission. She yells at him that he has permission and he stands there, just stands there. He just, 
stands there like an asshole. And then I Julian. I didn't even. I didn't think of that. Well, no, yeah, because when Julian goes up to see Waverly, he's like, Nicole's okay. And it's like, dude, you know Doc didn't tell her. You know that she has no idea that Nicole almost died. No idea whatsoever. Um, but to, like, not completely rag on Doc. And, but also, like, not to completely defend Doc murdering somebody, but I feel like it is need- necessary to point out, and I think I meant to do this last week, but it was in my episode 12 note. Um, Julian wouldn't have woken up if Doc hadn't killed him. <laughs> we would still have Charlie, so just throwing that out, that, like, Doc did do maybe something good, but either way. Yeah, I, um, I, I, see, you've got me all riled up now. Thinking about I wasn't how... trying to. I, I tried know. to stop myself. I really reined myself in. I know. I'm not... It I just mean, bubbled up, yeah. you know? I know. Bubbled up. Yeah, because, I mean, I don't... I feel like I need to get out my way hot stuff right now and just have, like, our rants all in one place. Um. <laughs> she leans back. Hmm. Go on. Yeah, I know. You're just really... You're ready. So, mentioning the, the way hop proposal, and those are air quotes for our listeners. It was not a question. Waverly didn't ask. Waverly didn't ask a question. And, like, I get the intention was there. I get that we're supposed to understand that it was a proposal. But you know what? If someone proposes to me like that, even in an apocalypse, I'm saying no on principle. <laughs> because everyone deserves an actual question. I think it was lazy. I think it was like another way for them to be like, hey, look at this thing that we did and have people fawn over it. And then for it not to like, it wasn't a question. We didn't get an answer. And like, it was lazy to me. <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right. Um, <laughs> I really growing in again. hard. I know. Um, wow. <laughs> I, that's what Ooh. happens when I don't edit the things I put in my yeah. notes. Um, oh. So I, I forgot don't, I put. That I in don't there. feel that way. I forgot I put that um, in there, and then it just kind of snowballed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> And we All have right. no more listeners. Who? Um. So I think it was a proposal. I don't know why she didn't just ask. I think it was supposed to be understood that she was asking. Yeah, it was. I would have said no over the ugly ring, but I'm a Leo. <laughs> so, yeah, that was actually, that was the whole thing about the uh, proposal that got me. The, the thing that got me about the proposal was I was like, don't you put that nasty ring on Nicole's finger? She deserves a diamond. Like, so, uh, and I'm going to talk more about the ring later because I feel like that's, uh, we're probably going to be really, really grateful that she put that ring on. I'll talk about it now. So, yeah, it, it, that ring is probably going to assist in some way with getting Waverly back or or something to that effect, or protecting Nicole or something. But we know that ring has power, and she put it on Nicole's hand, and then she disappeared. Mm-hmm. So I think we're going to be really grateful that she didn't go to K Jewelers. But for the moment, I'm, I'm just a little upset about the hand-me-down ring, because I think she should have bought one. Even even when Waverly had it on her own hand, she said it couldn't have been a princess cut. Like, yeah. even Waverly knows this is not a banging ring, so. Yeah, I mean, it's. that Yeah, so th- I guess that was my hang-up. I didn't like the jewelry. Yours was the jewelry, and yeah. mine is just the principle of the thing of not being asked a question. Because, like, I mean, yeah, because I know I had this conversation with a friend, and we vehemently agreed with each other, disagreed with each other. Because, yeah, I mean, it's just my thing was it was just kind of like a it wasn't a question. And Nicole didn't answer that. Um, That was also that was the other thing that got me was that, you know, Nicole did. I mean, it's an exchanging of rings. Right. So, like, she did mm -hmm. keep the ring. And that does imply a yes. But I was bothered that she didn't say yes. But I also think that at some point next season, we're going to get another proposal. A proper one. 
Or a one. Prop, yeah, probably. A proposal. Maybe with a for question. real jewelry. Yeah, for real jewels and like, um, maybe, yeah, a, an answer this time. That I wanted a yes. Like, that was my, I was like, hand me down ring and no yes. What? Yeah. So. It, it is funny, though, that you said, well, at least Nicole has the ring because I think it'll be crucial later on. I, I had an opposite reaction. I, my reaction was Waverly, had Waverly kept the ring, do you think she would have been able to get off the stairs? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, like it could have been the key to get her out of there. To get out oh, of there. Yeah, like maybe it lets you walk, it lets you maybe, pass back and yeah. forth through the gate. Oh, um, <laughs> that's, yeah, um, that's entirely possible. It's a good point. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, it was just, I just find it funny because I had that note down and then you had the opposite thought, so. One of us would be right. Um, about that ring, t you know, in the um, in the last episode, um, I talked about how I believed that the ring and not directly Waverly, which I might be changing up on that a little bit, was responsible for Julian's resurrection. This episode, mm -hmm. however, had Julian paying a price to save Nicole to bring her back mm -hmm. because she's mortal and has no deeper connection to that engagement ring that she hates. Yeah. But anyway, um, I think the reason Julian had to pay a price was because Nicole was a mortal who died a mortal death. It was within the order of things. You know what I mean? So I think this was... I think this was Julian interfering, which we know from Juan Carlo is not something angels are permitted to do. And I believe that's why the price was so steep. I think he broke the rules and had to pay for it with yes. his power, also, with his immortality, something. How dare you give me Buffy feelings with a she died a mortal death. And how dare you do that to me? <laughs> yeah, I none of none of you could see it, listeners, but I did literally see her <laughs> keel over and go off camera. And then I just kept talking because I knew she still had earbuds in. Yeah, she just kept on trucking through my my reaction there because that was rude. I know, I'm sorry. It was unnecessary. It's true, though. It is kind of necessary. Because, like, we've already seen one resurrection, right? So yeah. why should this one have such a high-ticket, you know, price? And I, I think that's the reason. I think this was interference. Yes, I agree. Although, did... I mean, Nicole didn't actually, like, die at that point yet. She was still alive, like, when he healed her. Yeah. So, sorry, I mean, yeah, she was yeah. about to die. Like, it yeah, was very clearly it. about yeah. to happen. Yeah, I mean, he's, like, because my first thought when he did it, when he talked about the price, I'm like, okay, was it his wings? Basically his, his yeah. angel, yeah. So, no, I'm on, now that you- Could have been, too. We didn't see the wings again, so. I think that was what and we were supposed to take out of it. he was bleeding pretty human. Yeah, I, I think that was what we were supposed to take out of it, that he gave up his power, he gave up his wings. Mm -hmm. That was so rude. Sorry. <sighs> I'm a out of whack. Can I talk about Winona? Yeah, dude. What were you Oh, I meant, I, I kind of, I know, that was silly. I meant, like, about Winona, Winona and the stairs, since we were talking about, you know, like, Julian and all this stuff. So, about Winona, like, not being able to climb the stairs. Like, I, yeah. I do believe that Doc is mortal now, and all that stuff, um, so he could go. But Bolshar like I said before, says to Julian, you know, you've never even seen the garden. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and yeah. Julian always talks about his post, you know? Yeah. Like, so I I think it's highly probable that Julian's post was never mm -hmm. in the garden. It was right outside at the tower steps. And he was yeah. supposed to stop people, you mm -hmm. know, from, from like, a, approaching it or, or climbing those stairs. And now that Winona has been given Peacemaker all over again, now that she has the flaming sword and she's mm -hmm. been chosen by an angel this time, I think that might be her post um, mm -hmm. guarding the garden from the outside. 
Yeah. Julian, Julian never saw it. For all we know, Julian couldn't get into it because that yeah. wasn't his purpose. That wasn't his task. He was supposed to be outside, you know, like guarding the gate. Mm-hmm. And so I think that might be the reason that yeah. Winona can't get up those steps. That's that's not where her purpose lies. Yeah. And I mean, Doc does tell her you're the guardian. Yeah. He does tell her that. So yeah, I'm with you on that one. Can I talk about Winona? As silly. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're doing, dude. I I want to know why she couldn't see. Okay. So, to me, it makes sense that maybe she couldn't see them because of her link to Bolshar. Oh, yeah, okay. But when she's unlinked, she still can't see them. And she can't see them until Waverly names her as a champion. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I just, I guess I had, I, I'm a little curious because there was a chunk there where she was, un, between her, the unlinking, like, between the curse being broken and um, being named champion, she still couldn't see them. So, I'm kind of wondering why. Because Jeremy, we know that Jeremy and Robin were able to see them. So it can't just be only those who are, I don't know, like who's deemed worthy to see the steps. I don't know. Doc strolled up and had no problem. Yeah. And he just killed people. Yeah. So I just, I have have questions about that. Um, Yeah, I hadn't really thought about that. That is a little strange. Yeah, I just, I, I'm having some issues with, uh, once again, I have questions. Oh, one of the other things about the, quote, proposal. Oh, two more things. Uh, Waverly calls Nicole, Nicole, really hot. And she did say really, but somebody asked Emily Andrus on Twitter, like, what Nicole's middle name was, and she said Rayleigh. I guess that's how you would say it, right? Yeah, I read it that way. Yeah, so we have a middle name, and it's more punny than her name originally was. So there's that. (laughs) Um, Also, with the baby carrots that we will um, talk about later in quotes, but um, somebody, Nicole puts the carrots down on the dirty railing, which upset me a lot, and I think I yelled at it once, like, I I vaguely remember yelling about it. You did. did. Yeah, thanks. But someone on Twitter, Princess... Bakari on Twitter brought my attention to the fact that one of the carrots falls and makes a loud thud after Waverly gets up on the railing. So do yourselves a favor and go and rewatch that because it totally, I caught it on my watch after they told me this. And it's really actually kind of funny. (laughs) So I did want to mention that, that that does happen. That it's like, you can just watch it fall off the back of the railing (laughs) and just, and it's really, really great. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I forgot to mention it amongst my uh, rant and condemnation of fandom. (laughs) Which was swift and thorough. I, you know what I loved? I loved um, Winona's like giggle fit in the barn with Waverly. I, I related to that so hard. Like everything has just gone so horribly wrong. Like, She's in so far over her head. Mm -hmm. Doc is a killer. Charlie Mm -hmm. is Julian. Glory is Ben. And Winona can't do anything but laugh at how shit things are going for her at the moment. And I just, I love her. Would protect her at all costs. It 100% reminded me of the scene with Buffy and Giles. Yes! Season 6. After he comes back to Sunnydale and she's catching him up and they just like. Dawn's a total klepto. <laughs> yeah. I think she mentioned. Yeah. So it's. Yeah. It totally reminded me of that. So. I had to mention that as well. Buffy references wherever I can. I think we're doing really well this episode. We are. I look We've forward to seeing few, the count. Yeah. yeah. I look forward to seeing our count. <laughs> Let's see. I've like abandoned, I abandoned completely my favorite moment section and I just really plowed through my other sections in my notes. Um, oh, oh, one thing we didn't talk about was that amazing acoustic version of Tell That Devil that starts playing at the end after Waverly gets pulled into the, to the garden and Doc goes walking up and like, holy shit, 
Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's on streaming services now, you guys. You can, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you can download it. You can buy it on iTunes. You can add it to your Spotify, whatever. Um, yeah. That's Jill Andrews again. Yeah. Um, and I, I agree with you. I think it's hauntingly beautiful. It was, and I was waiting for it because we knew she had put, tweeted that day that the finale aired that they had asked her to, to come up with an acoustic version, like, 24 hours before they needed it and stuff like that. And she did it and she released it. So it's like, I'm sitting there waiting and like, I know the second it started, I was like, there it is. <laughs> and it was, awesome. oh man, it was so good. And I also have to say, kind of talking about that moment and after, you know, Doc walks up the stairs and we get that flash of light and Winona's lying on the ground and getting up and, and grabbing Doc's belt. And she looks around and like not seeing anything. And she just whispers, bye. And I just wanted to mention, that would have been a gut-wrenching way to end the episode, but I think it would have been a really solid way to end the episode and the season. Like, can you imagine ending the season like that? You know me. I say go for the pain. I love I it. I know. I, I do. But I also love Randy Nedley. So I'm a little... I know. Few things can make me choose not the angst. Randy Nedley might be one of them. And wow. here I was praying for him not to die all year, you know, like I know. It's yeah, he 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 crosses that line for me. He gets me yeah. to to root against my love of of angst. That's fair, but That's I did special. just want Yeah. I did just want to throw that out there because that is kind of a heartbreaking moment. Yeah, it is. Also, since I mentioned Doc's belt, when he, like, removed his belt, I had no idea what the hell he was doing at first. And my first thought was, like, now is not the time, Doc. Like, <laughs> that was literally my first thought because it was, like, it was one of the, you're just like, what the shit is he doing? Yeah. So I just wanted to, since we were talking about that. But, yeah, just ending on that bye would have been amazing. Mm-hmm. That would have been. In my favorite favorite moments, and I think this has happened every time she's popped up this season, I just have Mercedes. Just one, a one word bullet. Just Mercedes. Dude, her entrance. That you're welcome. Oh my god, I loved it so much. I loved it so much. I know. And I, I, I love that 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 you know what she walks in on. I, I love that moment between Kate and Nicole. You know, we see that, uh, you know, Nicole is unwilling to let Doc off the hook for his bad oh, behavior. Yeah. You know, despite the fact that Kate is still, you know, calling him her man. Yeah. Uh, that bad boyfriend jab got a big chuckle from me. Yeah, it was good. Um, yeah, but, you know, like, so did Nicole, like, losing her head uh, about yeah. not having heard from Waverly and stuff. That was really cute. And I know, I know Kate was pulling cards in that shot, you guys, but the angle was bad and I couldn't, I couldn't get any of them. But that entire sequence was magic to me. You know, the fight mm -hmm. was, was good. You know, Mercedes, uh, entrance got such a laugh from me. Um, I think Danny Kind should enter cons that way too. And I'll mm -hmm. say it. I think she should just, you know, tell everybody they're welcome. Um, it would be really solid. And Nicole, you know, like, when she gets stabbed, you know, like, she's got this massive hole in her side, you know, and she says it's just yeah. a flesh wound. And I loved it. I've been saying all along that these beekeepers remind me of Monty Python and, and the Holy Grail. So yeah. I thought I thought that was really funny, too. It was it. It's a great moment. You know what I mean? Like, it all <sighs> takes place right there in that scene at the Gardner house. And you just yeah. get so many laughs. Yeah, it was good. I mean, I also, I'm really looking forward to seeing Kate and uh, Mercedes as roommates next season. Oh my god, please. Oh my god, please. I would love, oh. Just, like, dedicate some time to do that. Because that would be amazing. God, I, w I would watch that show. I would watch an entire show about that. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Or, like, do, like, a, a web series kind of deal with it, where it's, Yes! Like, that, oh, that'd yeah. be fun! It would be the greatest thing. They would be amazing. I hope so. God, I hope you're right about that. 
Um, yeah, I'd love to see it. Um, I also just have a note that says Winona looks damn good. Oh, now I remember what caused that. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, I'm going to go out on a limb and say she was looking damn good. No, it was the wardrobe so change. I think that did oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I really love that Jeremy and Robin got a sweet moment together at the top of the episode. Yeah. I I appreciate, like, the pressure that Jeremy is putting on himself to deliver, you know, and, like, yeah. his fear that he let dolls down is kind of showing itself yeah. in, like, a momentary meltdown. I think that's natural. It resonated with me. And he's, he's sort of, he's like Waverly, you know, like, he just so wants to help his people. Mm-hmm. Also, we got a joke sometime this season or last season about his magic groin, right? I can feel yeah, it in my so. groin. Like, he yeah. said that. Okay. So he's got an enchanted penis? Or, like, a super <laughs> empathetic penis. A penis that can feel the full spectrum of human emotion. Please stop saying penis. But it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Boy, actually second... plan to say it that many times, but once again, you fell off camera laughing. Yeah. So then I had to keep going. I was just going to say, for the second time this episode, I disappeared off camera. <laughs> I'm so... I, I, I actually wasn't big on not recording at home, but now that I know I can just disappear off camera so easily onto the table, like, it's actually pretty fabulous. I'm enjoying this. I am too. Um... Yeah, he says it. He has the I feel it in my groin uh, in the season two finale, actually. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, it's it's apparently where his feeling his friends are in danger comes from. His groin. Man. Yeah. So. Another Robin and Jeremy moment that I liked was I liked them like tag team telling the gang about the Crypsis. At the end, it was a really yeah. great moment. Also, like, uh, at the end with the Crypsis, when Winona's, like, putting it on Waverly and she, like, boops her on the nose. <laughs> that was cute. It so was. I love them so much. I thought, um, I thought Bobo coughing up dirt was a nice touch. Because, like, yeah. Bullshar has such a strong tie, like, to the earth. And there are Christian schools of thought that ascribe to the belief that when Adam and Eve sinned, the devil was given dominion over the earth. They don't take the New Testament into account at all, but there are a lot of things that organized yeah. religion don't take into account. Anyway, um, he was, uh, he, uh, Bolshar also says to Winona, God isn't here, which can either back up what I just said, or it was meant to be positively Nietzschean and it works either way <laughs> oh since I mean I mentioned that the Robin line was kind of a season two finale callback <sighs> in season one finale and in the season two finale we got a reference to a chili cook-off we did not get a chili cook-off line in this finale and I am probably more upset about it than I should be but I just find it delightful that they found a way to fit it in twice and I was really hoping it would happen a third time Maybe season four. Yeah, maybe. One can only hope. Anyway, I digress. I did think it was neat adding scales to Bolshar. Like, once they, they ground him, you know, like, yeah. to this plane and everything. I Yeah, I thought that was really cool that his, like, snake was showing. I, I would have preferred if they had just gone with the makeup, you know? And they yeah. hadn't used, like, the the CGI. Like, the, yeah. that, the snake head took me out of it a little bit. Um, it, because I was live tweeting, you know? Like, yeah. uh, we were watching it together and I was live tweeting. So doing that, you know, like, I just, like, caught, like, twice. I just caught, like, a flash of a snake. And I was like, what is that? You know, like, because yeah. I, was, I was kind of already taken out of it a little bit. But I just, I thought makeup did such a great job with yeah, that look. Did. It was a great look. Yeah. They yeah. really did. And talking about Snakey Bolshar, in the finale, I noticed the snakeskin tie that Bolshar is wearing. Oh. And it's at least the tie that he was wearing for both episode 11 and 12. And I have a feeling he has probably been wearing a snakeskin tie this entire time. I still need to oh go back and God. check. But 
Yeah. You are blowing my mind right now. <laughs> yeah, I felt really dumb for taking that long to notice it. Hey, um, because I, I didn't. Like, you just yeah, pointed it out I mean, to me. But it's one of those like random wardrobe thing where I guess you wouldn't really necessarily hone in on. But yeah, um, at least for 11 and 12, he was wearing a snakeskin tie. Oh, man. At least I'm assuming it was snakeskin. It was reptilian of some kind, and I can't imagine it wouldn't have been snakeskin. So, just throwing that out there. I like when, at the end, when Bolshar and Wynonna are fighting, Bolshar has that, you bested my bees line, and Wynonna's like, I bested your mom. Which didn't necessarily seem like a strong joke, but it got a nod of approval from Waverly, so I did appreciate that. Like, Waverly's reaction after her delivery was, like, pretty great. Yeah, I loved it. It got a laugh from me. Yeah, I just, it was one yeah. of those things where it's like, a your mom joke? Like, and then it happened again. But no, I just, it was one of those things where it was just like, Waverly's reaction sold it, I think, for me. So. Also, in this episode, I don't have tarot for you, but I do have a little astrology. Alrighty. So we found out that Nicole Hot is a Capricorn which is very exciting if you're an astrology nerd like me. Capricorn, mm -hmm. like Virgo, is an earth sign. Uh, Capricorn is a sign that represents time and responsibility, uh, and its representatives are traditionally, are traditional and often like very serious uh, in nature. Uh, these individuals possess an inner state of independence that enables significant progress both in their personal and professional lives. They are masters of self-control, and they have the ability to lead the way to make solid and realistic plans and manage uh, many people who work for them at, at any time. They're excellent managers. They will learn from their mistakes and get to the top based solely on experience and expertise. They're responsible, disciplined, self-controlled, and yeah. Uh, however, like Capricorns can be know-it-alls. Um, <laughs> they can struggle with forgiveness. We, we already see, well, one, we see that Nicole just got a promotion, right? She got yeah. right to the top of Purgatory PD. And as far as struggling with for forgiveness, she seems miles away from forgiving Doc. Pe uh, pessimism and condescension is also something that Capricorns need to watch out for. They're in inclined to mm -hmm. do that. Uh, also, what made Kate's joke so hilarious about, are you sure you're not a Scorpio, is that Scorpios are resourceful, brave, passionate, and fiercely protective of their friends, mm -hmm. but they are often unfairly <laughs> maligned for their tempers, and Kate is hilarious, and I love her. Yeah, that was pretty great. I enjoyed that. So, it was pretty great. Um, let's see. I'm trying to blow through my favorite moment. I like just some little things. I like the casual, like, oh, that's Keith the Revenant when he comes out on the porch. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, like, this is, like, only the second guy time we've seen this dude, but sure. Yeah. Um, why not a shocked look when she, when Julian sprouts wings just because I really enjoy Melanie Scrofano's face? And I mentioned this, but yeah, Waverly, or sorry, Winona yelling at Julian to, to save Nicole's life was, like, really great. Mm -hmm. And I, I mentioned it, but I just, it was worth repeating. And you know me and my I have questions section? Questions. Um, so inside the house, when Waverly walks into her bedroom, she's talking to somebody on the phone. Mm-hmm. And I really want to know who she's talking to. I guess I'm assuming that it was Chrissy Nedley, but it was still, like, a really random thing. When she walked into her bedroom, wasn't she calling Nicole and leaving Nicole a voicemail? It rang, though. We hear the phone ring, I thought. Yeah, it rang, rang or did but... it dial? Maybe Nicole's rang and we heard... Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I, feel I thought... I, I'm pretty sure. Because I thought sure. she was, like, on the phone. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Apparently, I did not watch enough times. I was focused on other things. All good. Okay. I feel better then. Because, <sighs> like, I was really kind of confused about that. Yeah. Look, y'all, I miss things. <laughs> yeah. And I think she was like, I want to tell you something, or I've got so much to yeah. tell you, or, like, something like that. Yeah. I, I think she was uh, yeah. leaving her a voicemail. That's why, okay, I feel better. Because I think the... 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 
the ringing, I think, messed me up. Because I guess it wasn't sure. I, I guess I, I didn't know where it was coming from, and I just assumed it was coming from the house, but I guess it was coming from Nicole's phone. Okay. See, this is why I ask these things. Okay. I feel better then. Let's see. At the end, what is the signet like? Nedley and Wynonna are talking about how everybody's gone, but, like, the town was evacuated, so everybody would have been gone. Yeah, but I don't know. Chrissy and Nedley may not have left. You yeah. Know, like, um, and we know that Jeremy, Robin, and, and Nicole didn't leave. Yeah. So, and, and I don't think they were evacuated unless they were evacuated by this Valdez. Um, so... Yeah. yeah, I just kind of, I guess I'm working off of the assumption that whoever has, like, that whoever has, I guess, Chrissy is not the same person as, like, I think Valdez has Nicole, Jeremy, and Robin. So I've just been, like, working off of that. So it just seems weird because they're implying that, like, people were taken by the garden, which just seems weird. But I don't know. Look. It's hard. Some of this is very hard for me to kind of work through because I have so many questions about like what the hell I watched, despite the fact that I've watched it so many times now. But I think I just need to sit with things. I need to talk it out. That's why we have a podcast, right? Yes. Uh, oh, and why did Jeremy randomly have a vial of Robin's blood? He's, you know, he's taking <laughs> the Angelina Jolie road. <laughs> It's it gonna just make made a necklace laugh. later. It just made me laugh that it was like so handy, like it was right there. I had a note that I had to share with you. So in my lengthy ass recap that I wrote, wrote you know when Winona kisses Doc in the barn to distract mm -hmm. him enough to handcuff him, I my note is just like God, men are so easily. He didn't even notice that she did that <laughs> because she was kissing him, true. and I just I had to share that. Yeah. Hand, uh, the, those, the chain was long, too. Those couldn't have been, like, quiet to, like, sneak right? out. And then they're cold around your skin. I, yeah. I know. Again, men are... Boys. So useless. Oh, uh, also a random note. You know, we've talked about, like... We talked about a couple episodes about how... Like, about when Julian might be introduced, you know, before he was actually... We found out who he was. And I just threw this in my notes. We, Waverly finding out that her father is an angel is in the same episode that introduces Charlie. So, just Man. threw that out there because it popped into my head. Tricky, tricky. Missed it. Didn't call it. I know. Who knew that the boring white dude that we didn't really... I need to stop. Poor Charlie. Oh, I don't know why I put this in this note. Um, can we just really quick talk about how terrifying it was watching the beekeeper come close to Winona with a chainsaw and listening to Winona yell out no so many times? Yeah. That got buried in my notes, and I don't know why it got buried. But, yeah, that was terrifying and awful, and Melanie Scrifano is a great actress, and that was terrifying and awful, and I never want to see it again. <laughs> yeah, all of those things are true and real things. Yeah. yeah. It's just really heartbreaking. Now I'm just laughing about the axe fake out again. <laughs> it was terrible. I think that actually got all of my random notes that I needed to mention out of the way. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. I I only had um, a note about Nedley's entrance. I, I thought Nedley's entrance was almost as good as Mercedes was, you know, like... yeah. Uh, you boys go ahead and duck, you know, like that, like that was, you already mentioned his Hawaiian shirt and everything. I yeah. loved all of that. Um, and I'm just, I'm, you know, you touched on this already too, but I am deeply pleased that Winona did not drug Waverly and go it alone again. Mm -hmm. Um, they didn't, you know, they, they faced the big fight together, win or lose. Yeah. We lost a little bit. Um, yeah. And, you know, like, plus, just Waverly running after Winona and cursing at her filled my soul with light. Uh, mm -hmm. She's so cute when she's furious. Uh, she's always cute. But, yeah, it was really great. And, you know, maybe next season we'll see her 
maybe admit that going in with a group is okay. So maybe, maybe it'll be another step up. Since, you know, she thought she was leaving her friends in safety and look what happened. We don't actually know where they went. Alrighty, well, I straight up do not have anything else on my list. Sweet. Other than quotes. Quotes. Quotes, quotes, quotes. Full disclosure, in news that should shock nobody, you I have get a lot of quotes. A lot of quotes. I know you do. I really do. So, I like how she ended her, uh, when Anna ended her speech, the revenants in the beginning. I do have the whole speech. I'm not going to, I'm, but I like how she ended with, but first we bourbon. Yeah, I really liked her. I'll take that as a yes, queen. I love that that fell yeah. flat. And yeah. I I have the, like, abbreviated version of what she said. I only took, like, the last half of it. But her, yeah. you know, like, when she says, but I'm willing to give it up. I'm willing to go back to being not much of anything. A woman with a stellar haircut. Shout out to mm -hmm. Jarvis for the ringlets. A tired liver, a loaded last name, and this land, a land that is a show of faith, I'm willing to share, like we've been forced to share this curse. That was I loved dope. That. Yeah. I mean, just And I do love thing. the Jarvis shout out. Uh, Waverly coming up. And I like how, I mean, we glossed over a lot of Julian stuff this episode, but I'm okay with it. I like how when Waverly, like, comes up after the greenhouse and stuff like that, she's like, are you mad? And Waverly, and Winona's just like, no, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. And, um, I'm glad you're here if it's going down, and Waverly says, I'm yelling to Burr. Yeah. God, they're adorable. I, I liked, know. I liked Jeremy's, I am a feather, I am a plant, I am a gust of wind, I am freaking out right now. Yeah. And then when he asks Robin, any sign of a bobo? No, not even a bow. Cute. I, I just, the, the, you're my personal meditation app. You can double tap me anytime, uh, maybe later. Like, I don't know. That just made me laugh. That was funny. I love my ex-boyfriend Charlie is your father, Julian. Yep. Hose job. This is going to kill mama. Yep. I had that one next. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Doc is not okay. Did he sleep with Charlie and Julie too? <laughs> I loved her, but how does my hair look? Like, that's... That was meant next on my list. And then, yeah. you know, after the freak out and the perspective, it's Waverly's like, and you know your hair looks great. Yeah, but is it end of the world great? Yeah. Yes, Winona. Yes, it is. And I, you know, she kind of goes, you know, we've said there there are like several yeah. lines. Everything Winona says in that scene is, is gold. But what, what I really did love was, and I don't have my magic gun that can kill my demon enemies, who are currently in my kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good. I like Kate telling, you know, Nicole never apologize for love. Yeah. I love Mercedes. You're welcome so much I want it to be the blurb for this episode. Okay. All right. Was there more of a quote to that, or...? It's Mercedes, you're welcome. That's it. Okay. That's that's okay. all of it. I also like her uh, go, okay? She tries to bite me, she gets slapped. And then Kate's, I kind of like her. Yeah, I really like that too. Also, the vanilla dip, thing, dip donut thing that made kind of little sense, but okay, it was a nice throwback to the AU episode from last uh, season. Kate's, she smelled, that smells like vanilla dip donuts. Yeah. Um... When uh, the beekeepers rush in and Kate's like, Bullshar's minions. And Nicole's like, you couldn't have seen that coming. That was, <laughs> was funny like, too. Yeah. One of my favorite lines in the episode. I like, did. Favorite, I like, um, I like uh, Robin's why so nonchalant big brain. This is huge. You should be chalant. Mm -hmm. um, I like Mercedes. Who's this? I'm Kate. I live here. Then we got to talk rent and redecorating. I just had to just, and Nicole, when she, like, collapses on the ground, of all the jerks and all the gin joints, because you immediately know that it's Doc. Mm -hmm. There is nobody else that she would have said that to. Yeah. And I think I even said it while the, I was like, Doc! <laughs> I love Randy Nedley. We cut through them like RuPaul cuts through performances without, without heart. I haven't seen that show. Get your life in order, son. We could also yeah. use that one, and I would be fine with it. 
get your life in order, son. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. I knew you'd have that on your list. Yeah, or we could the name this Mambo number seven. Because <laughs> apparently one through six are taken. Yeah, that entire Mambo number five <laughs> joke train is in my list. I like, love it so much. It was the best. I also love how it ended with, like, the blending, and Nedley's like, well, I think you should put it on puree. Yes. Yes. Also, that, the, again, there was just, you know, did Lou Bega give up when Mambo's <laughs> one through four failed? No, he wrote Mambo yeah. number five and the rest is music history. But that joke carries on for way too long. And <laughs> I know. is... I mean it in the best possible way. Like, that is why it is so hilarious. Like, who oh, would yeah. carry a Mambo number no. 5 joke in yeah. 2018 for that long? Awesome. I Amazing. I thought the line that Bobo had when Julian walks into Waverly's bedroom is like, and now you're back and ready to take credit for everything this girl has become all on her own was very interesting. Because yeah. we know how, like, what Waverly means to Bobo. So it was mm -hmm. really interesting. Yeah. I love Doc's Bullshar has sorely underestimated the utter assholes he is up against. That was next on my list. Oh. Sorry. No, I do enjoy it when we have, like, when I can just clear my my stuff because you've said it, and it's literally, like, the next thing I have up. I, I enjoy it. I like it when we're, like, vastly on the same page. Um, when Winona runs into the, the homestead, Waverly, they've got a mother of a machine gun. We packing like a bedwetter for summer camp. That was my next one. Mm hmm Waverly telling Jeremy, sorry, just sad. No, I know. Why? You can feel it with your power? No, I can see it on my best friend's face. I just yeah. love that line. I love Jeremy. That was sweet. Mm -hmm. I also really love Doc's learn some new tricks, you tired old bitch. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. I don't know about you, but my next line is the Waverly and Nicole scene. So, was it next on you? Yep. Go ahead and take it, dude. Oh, man. I thought I'd lost you. No, I was just having some baby carrots. Cat's delivery for that line was spectacular. She even holds up the baby carrots. I carrot. know. I know, it's just the matter-of-fact way she says it. Like, it's the most normal thing in the world to just be chilling on the porch railing after almost dying. During after this the apocalypse. Fight. Yeah. No, I'm just having some baby carrots. Like, I love that line so much. Um, when Winona has them all at the table... The curse is broken. There is no herb air. I'm just a girl with a big-ass ass. And then Nicole, girl... You're right, them boots is tight. Yeah, top shelf. I just really enjoyed the top shelf call there. Top shelf, yep. <laughs> and then Jeremy's, hey, this is good. There's usually a lot of vagina jokes because I do, it, it, it was another callback to the season two finale with the number of vagina jokes we had there. There was yeah, a lot. There were a lot. My last one is you bested my bees. I bested your mom. I still have a lot more bear with me. Go for it, dude. Take it away. It's the finale. I'm going to do me. Love it. <laughs> All right. Especially because you didn't end on a heartbreaking one. So. I didn't. I'm sorry. I let you down. No, it's okay. I'm good. It means I can keep going. Um, after she drugs everybody and she's like trying to explain and I just, I can't handle seeing the looks on your faces if I fail. Yeah. Um, we talked about the, hey, asshole, that was a dick move. But I just, am I your backup? Uh, I think I know we're both, I think we both know I'm yours. And I just, I love them so much. Mm -hmm. Also, with the your mom joke, that was your best, at, you best, there we got a second your mom joke. Because yeah. it was, don't you get it, Winona Earp, you weren't the heir of anything anymore. And she goes, your mom's not the heir of anything. Yeah. Also, I had to throw this out here. Uh, Bolshar calls Waverly, you pathetic Quim. And if you Google Quim, it is not a very nice word. <laughs> no. So he basically called Waverly the C word. So, but he's back in hell sense. where he belongs. He is. Um, I love it when Peacemaker lights up and Winona's like, ah, holy shit balls. 
and you like that bitch i've seen princess bride like 70 times that which is funny. the most reasonable explanation for somebody randomly acquiring sword skills yeah. <laughs> um and we got two baby girls this episode we got don't you die on me you idiot from way from waverly and then winona's like it's okay you'll be fine baby girl and then Waverly telling Winona, you, Winona, you did it. You killed Bolshar, my hero. Don't you dare give up, baby girl. Yeah. Winona telling Doc, she doesn't even have a weapon in there. I am a weapon. I just have Winona's buy in here just because it was that heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. And, okay, I'm done after this. Just tell me what to do. Let's get them back. And then Ned Lee's the last line of the season. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. They got three f bombs this episode, and they so fought many. hard for them. Yeah, yep. but that, yeah, I know. I had a lot of quotes, but I felt worn. Like I, I felt like I was good this time. Yeah, dude. Alrighty, that does it for me. All right, that it does it for me. So, with that, go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, we, it's been. As per usual, it's a good time podcasting and, and having you all with us. So thank you. If you haven't read my recap yet and want to check it out, uh, it's been retweeted from the Make Your Peace Twitter, which is at 4YE underscore MYP podcast. You can follow the 4YE Twitter directly at 4 underscore Y underscore E to see when it goes up each week, which I said that and I need to amend that. Um, you can ch- also follow the, the 4YE Twitter and just see what else the site posts and stuff like that. We cover a variety of other shows, and every so often, Laura and I throw stuff up there. And you can also check our stuff out at 4ye.co.uk. And you can find me personally on Twitter at cmushaw. That's at C-M-E-U-S-H-A-W. Laura, where can they find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at R.S. Mayfair. Alrighty, and like I said, don't forget to send us some of your thoughts, theories, and all that stuff for our Season 3 wrap-up episode, which we'll have in a couple weeks. We are taking a well-deserved break. Yeah. So, with that, hope you're enjoying hiatus. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, you guys.